Apple just announced the biggest update ever for their most popular laptops, the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. Now, this new MacBook feature is something Apple has never done before, and it will change all MacBooks going forward. But with this exciting news also comes some confusing buying options. So in this video, I'll explain how Apple's new M1 chip has changed the MacBook lineup, and I'll go over some key differences between the MacBook Air and the Pro so you can decide which one is best for you to buy in late 2020 going into 2021. Now, one of Apple's biggest advantages is vertical integration, meaning they have complete control over their hardware and software, and now they've taken it to another level by creating their first in-house system on a chip for the Mac called the M1. Now, what this does is basically consolidate what used to be many different components, such as a processor, graphics card, and memory into one single chip. Now, by doing this, Apple claims major improvements in performance, efficiency, and security. This type of system on a chip design is something Apple has been doing for years on their iPads and iPhones, but now it's coming to the Mac, and the first Macs to get it are the 13-inch MacBook Air and 13-inch MacBook Pro. These two laptops used to be pretty different in the past, but it's hard for the everyday consumer to notice the differences now. If you compare these new late 2020 MacBooks online, you'll see they share some key similarities, such as they both have a 13.3 inch retina display with wide color and true tone technology. Both have up to 16 gigabytes of memory, up to two terabytes of SSD storage, a 720p HD webcam, don't get me started on that. And surprisingly, both have just two USB-C ports. But most importantly, they both have the same brand new Apple M1 chip. This means they both have the all new eight core processor, which is the highest performance CPU Apple has ever built. Both have the world's fastest integrated graphics in a personal computer, and both have a 16 core neural engine for machine learning. So if they both have all these great new features of the M1 chip, then what are the differences? Let's start with the smallest differences and go to the biggest differences. First is price, which may be an obvious difference, but there's something to notice here. The MacBook Air has always been and still is cheaper than the MacBook Pro. The Air starts at $999 while the Pro starts at $1299. But the base Air only has a 7-core GPU for graphics, which is 1-core fewer than the MacBook Pro, hence the price difference. However, you can choose the $1249 variant of the Air, which has the extra GPU core to match the Pro at 8 cores, but by choosing that variant of the Air, it also doubles the SSD storage to 512 gigabytes. So that means there's only a $50 difference between the cheapest eight core MacBook Air and the cheapest MacBook Pro, but with another difference being the Pro having half the SSD storage space at 256 gigabytes. So those are things to look out for regarding the price. Now, both the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro have Touch ID, so you can use your fingerprint for things like logging onto your Mac and using Apple Pay. However, only the Pro has the Touch Bar, which I've never really been a fan of. It basically replaces all the top keys with a dynamic touch-sensitive bar that changes based on what app you currently have open, which is cool and all, but the touch bar is a feature that you absolutely do not need, so if you're considering buying a Pro just for that, you may want to get an Air instead. Also, MacBook Pro has a brighter screen with 500 nits of brightness compared to the Air's 400 nits of brightness, which is something to consider if you use your laptop outside during the day a lot. Now this next difference is very negligible, but it's interesting to point out because when you think of the Air, you think of it being the smallest and lightest MacBook, which is still kind of true. But the MacBook Air at its thickest point is actually 0.02 inches thicker than the MacBook Pro. They're also the same exact width and length, but the Pro is actually only 0.2 pounds heavier than the Air. So when it comes to size, don't automatically assume the Air is extremely lighter and thinner than the Pro. They are closer in size and weight than you may think. Also, the Pro comes with better speakers featuring high dynamic range and a better studio quality microphone array compared to the Air. So if you are wanting to improve your video chats and Zoom calls with better speakers and microphone, you may want the Pro. Now the second biggest difference is the battery. The MacBook Air used to be known for having the longest battery life of all the MacBooks, but not anymore. The MacBook Pro has a larger battery than the Air, about eight watt hours more, and the Pro has two more hours of battery life compared to the Air. Now, Apple claims you can get up to 20 hours of video playback on the Pro compared to 18 hours on the Air. Now the new MacBook Pro also has the longest battery life ever in a Mac, so if you're all about a long lasting battery, then you should definitely get the Pro. 
Now, before we get into the biggest difference between the Air and the Pro, to help you better understand the importance of the new Apple M1 chip, you should check out today's sponsor, Brilliant, which is the best place to learn about all things related to math and science. Brilliant is a website and app that has over 60 interactive courses to help you learn foundational knowledge from things like basic mathematics to chemistry all the way to machine learning. Now, Brilliant helps you develop true understanding of ideas by encouraging active problem solving through their courses, practice sections, and daily problems. I recently took their course on Computer Science Essentials where I learned about the fundamentals of core computer concepts to help me think like a computer scientist and get hands-on with a few specific algorithms. If you're like me and you're a fan of Apple computers, then you're probably interested in what goes on behind the scenes with their innovation of their next generation chips. Go to brilliant.org slash Andy Sly to sign up for free. Also, the first 200 people will get 20% off their annual premium membership. So click the link below to get started today. And that brings us to the biggest difference between the new MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. Drum roll, please. A fan? Yes, a fan, or what Apple likes to call an intelligent active cooling system or something crazy like that. But it's basically just a little fan. So why is it so important? Well, the fan, or lack thereof, affects both the Air and the Pro in different ways. First, the MacBook Air is completely fanless. So this means the air will be utterly silent because we all know the loudest a MacBook gets is when the fan kicks in when it's doing some high intensity task. The air will hardly make any noise. Think of how loud an iPad's internal components get. That's about how loud the air will be. So if you want an extremely quiet laptop, get the air. However, since the air lacks the fan that the Pro has, the Pro has a definitive advantage in performance, even though they both use the same M1 chip. Now keep in mind that today's processors can almost always run faster if given proper cooling. Some of the smaller in laptop and phone chips can boost up to multiple gigahertz until they get too hot. In a fanless body like the MacBook Air, the CPU will need to throttle down some, so even though the Air and the Pro have the exact same processor, which in theory should run at the same speed, the fan in the MacBook Pro lets it run at peak performance for longer. Now, this gives the performance nod to the MacBook Pro, and it's solely the reason I ordered the Pro instead of the Air. The most intensive task I do on my Mac is edit 4K videos in Final Cut Pro, so if you're like me and you edit videos or you want to run high-intensity apps for long periods of time, such as gaming, then the MacBook Pro should be able to excel at those tasks compared to the Air. So those are the biggest differences between the new 2020 M1 MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. I'm not going to talk about the 16-inch MacBook Pro because if that's what you're considering, you probably know that you already need that. That's for the Pro users. It's very expensive, and it didn't get the M1 chip just yet. So I'll hold off on that for now. That's why this video was focused on MacBook Pro and MacBook Air 13-inch only. Let me know which one you are choosing in the comments below, or let me know why you are skipping this round of MacBooks. If this video helped you out, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more Apple and tech videos in the future. My name is Andy. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.